Uh, except that when I was deployed during that time, I was in 2016, I was deployed 2017, 2018. This is me doing basic training. Uh, I just got back from doing a peak. Sergeant First Class Dorless Earns has been a soldier in the Colorado Army National Guard since 2002. His family emigrated from Haiti in 1994 when he was 17. Having grown up there, Dorless witnessed relief efforts firsthand from the U.S. military and came to admire them greatly for it. So, shortly after the beheading of Wall Street journalist Daniel Pearl by terrorists in Pakistan, Dorless felt it was his duty to enlist. You know, that's what forced me to join the National Guard. See how crazy it was. Like, it was chaotic in the news. Everybody was scared. And even my wife was scared. Say, what's going on? So, I joined in to make a difference. Dorless has two jobs in the Colorado National Guard. During the week, he is a shop supervisor at Field Maintenance Shop 9 in Aurora, Colorado, where he oversees vehicle repairs. For one week in a month, he works in the S-2 or Intelligence Shop, helping soldiers the 169th Field Artillery Brigade on Buckley Air Force Base. While we were driving it, it was blowing oil and cooling it everywhere. My goal here is to get the, the seal number of the engine, right down, you know, all the right down on the work order what's wrong with it and then from that point i'll go to the msd to the tm and find on the innocent for the engine see if we can order a new engine the national guard serves many purposes to the american people but one larger role is to step forward in the event of natural disasters and emergencies Dorless's full-time position with the guard and license to drive large military trucks makes him eligible to serve on a small team that trains regularly for rescue operations in the snow. Given Dorless's seniority with the unit, he serves as the truck commander for his team. And here I am, you know, every snow mission going out there, I, I think it's a, uh, to help the community, you know, it gives me joy just to do this, you know, because sometimes people need help and I love being in the snow, even though I'm from Haiti in the cold, <laughs> cold storm, but the snow, I love being in the snow. The vehicle they drive resembles a tank, but in reality shares little in common. The small unit support vehicle, or SUSV for short, is an amphibious tracked vehicle that's built to distribute its weight evenly to a maximum ground pressure of 1.7 psi. This allows it to practically glide above snow banks four feet or taller, where doubtless any normal vehicle would be stuck. The SUSV is a rubber track vehicle that's meant to go on deep snow. It was brought into the Army system back in the 80s, used for uh, to transport squads over snow terrain. We use it here in this state primarily for domestic operations to pick up people stranded on the highway and other such things. SUSV rescue teams aren't activated for every winter storm, as the decision to activate them needs to be weighed against the resources involved. That decision is left up to the Colorado Governor's Office after determining the severity of an upcoming winter storm. On March 12th, Governor Jared Polis activated 50 soldiers to help local agencies during the blizzard. Once activated, the Colorado National Guard strategically placed SUSV teams around the Denver area in anticipation where the snow was expected to cause the most concern. As the storm progressed, teams would be repositioned as support was requested. Dorless's team started out in Aurora to keep an eye out on Interstate 25, but quickly moved up to Loveland as the snow began to build up in the mountains. Uh, we're heading uh, to Loveland just to stage for our next mission. Don't know, we not, don't have a mission yet, but once we get up there, we'll find out if uh, we need to get called out to that mission or not. SUSV teams are trained not only to drive in snow, but also in emergency first aid. This training can only go so far, though, and, for this reason, the National Guard teams up with first responders such as paramedics or firefighters where soldiers will assist, rather than administer, aid to rescued individuals. In Dorless's case, once they arrived in Loveland, they linked up with firefighters at Fire Station 7. This district is out west, a little bit heavier snowfall generally, and uh, we have a little bit more mountainous terrain. It's steep, the snow gets a little deeper, and access to these types of homes becomes very difficult. So I don't expect that we're done for tonight. Uh, this kind of snowfall, uh, I expect that we will run again 
and once that temperature drops, it's going to be a lot harder for us to get these things around on the roads, and especially anything that's not plowed, we're probably not going to make it. So to be able to rely on a vehicle like this is uh, it's a huge asset to the department. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, here we are, the lovely Loveland Fire Station, number seven. We made it up last night from our previous uh, location. Uh, we are still on standby here. We are the... Uh, our first uh, mission this morning, but for some reason it got canceled. That that person got self recovery, and now we are back here on standby, waiting for the our next mission. Once in Loveland, Dorless's group fielded several rescue calls, but one in particular stands out. Living up in the mountains, the Brattons experience extreme conditions practically year round. A few years back, a wildfire burned down their house, and they had to spend the next two years living in a trailer on their property while they built a new one. Even with their preparations, such as owning several power generators and high-level trucks, they were unable to handle a dire situation when their daughter Lucy's air compressor suddenly stopped working. It was a long walk back up yesterday. I'm almost 74 and it was like, man. <laughs> this is, a, kept asking Rich, how many hills are there? He said, he said well, one, but there's nine steep places. <laughs> Yeah, so this morning we noticed the generator wasn't working to fill our oxygen tanks and realized we weren't going to have enough oxygen to get us very far, so we decided it was time to call and see if we could get to town where there's power since the baby needs oxygen. So luckily we get a cell phone signal behind our house, so we were able to climb up to a high spot to call and find some help. So now we're on our way to town so that the baby stays safe. Once safely out of the mountains, Maria Bratton and her daughter were transported to a local hospital, and Dorless's team went back on standby for further rescues. Overall, the SUSV teams completed nearly three dozen missions, rescuing 47 people total. When the danger had passed, the vehicles were loaded up and returned to their shops to be inspected. They didn't sit around for long, though, as not even two weeks later, they were out in Grand Mesa training some more to keep their skills sharp. I don't want no rewards. I don't want no stories. I don't want nothing out of it, you know? I hope you cut all those things out, sir. <laughs> <laughs>